is this wacky game? This is uh, the Steve Haskey simulator. Right. It's all about food trucks and uh, the West Coast. And, right. No, and, it's not. Tell us really what it is. It's a nuts and bolts look at the life of someone who decides to start a food truck. Or, or some sort of small business truck. Uh, and if you pay extra, you can unlock, I think, another character. Uh, one of the characters is like a single mom who's like, running out of money, and she's dealing with a custody battle. And so, like, it starts out, you think, oh, I'm just going to manage, you know, the, uh, a spreadsheet of money stuff about how to run a food truck. But in the middle of it, it's, no, I also have to get to the courthouse at a certain time for a custody battle with my daughter. And this is somehow actually pushed together and made fun. It's interesting to play with. So, uh, you know, fun would be like, woo this is more of digging through the whole system and making the most of it and having it be tough in that sort of um, FTL, faster than light way, okay. but in a Steve Haskey Portland twist way. All right, all right. Uh, it's all black and white. It's definitely got a... The, it, it, when you get into it, the tone is already pretty tough. The, the odds are against, you know, it's trying to make a statement about uh, doing this as a business. Because I think people will, like, go to a food truck and say, oh, yeah, that's so easy, and why does it cost so much for a goddamn grilled cheese? And this sort of digs into, you know what, there's something to it. It's a really hard game to look at on the show floor. That's, any of these new over ones are kind of tough in that way because they explore weird systems that are hard to just soak up five, for about five seconds. But it's worthwhile checking out. It's very worthwhile checking out. It's easy to download for off the, like, ten bucks online. You just pay right on the site, and boom, you got it. That sort of thing. Sure. My name's John Romero. It's uh, J O eight. No, uh, I'm Richard Huffmeyer. Uh, you had me there for a second. Yeah, uh, it's the haircut. Uh, and I'm here for uh, the independent um, games festival and the MTV Music Awards that now, were on Wednesday. And you, I saw that you picked up three Moon Men. I believe that <laughs> yeah. was for best uh, best kiss, <laughs> uh, best supporting actress in a leading role, and uh, best terminology. What? Terminology or herminology? I don't even know what that means. I think I think I just we just made it all up. Yeah, uh, but I did want not not to be too cheesy, but do congratulations thanks. on making a really great game. Oh, uh, award or no award, really enjoyed what what Cart Life that Cart Life did. Now be, you did a, you've done a really cool thing in taking as soon as you've gotten the award, you did your best to take that and put it towards other people. So I'd love to take this opportunity for you to do the same. Oh, sure, yeah. Because you've been talking to a lot of people this week about great games. So what's really been turning your crank here at uh, the GDC? Oh, well, there's so much to see. Uh, and it's a good problem to have, right? I mean, um, it, well, for me, uh, for, for y'all in the media, maybe it's a little bit more like work. But for me, it's still in the realm of leisure. Or, um, you know, these are other games that I can steal from, so it's much more pleasurable for me. Um, maybe. I, I don't want to be presumptuous. You don't actually, I mean, are, do you, are you the kind who sees other games and sort of by osmosis gets inspired by them? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There, there's nothing new going on up here. This is all derivative and um, digestive, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, uh, the, the, the game that I was most interested in, in, in showing, at least um, in the last few days, was it's a game called Howling Dogs by uh, an interactive fiction author named Porpentine, and it's unreasonably good yeah what, what about that really really spoke to you as not just a game maker but as a fan and someone who had to make their own games yeah well I guess primarily um, not only did it really touch me in ways that uh, are unusual you don't really um, it kind of pre presents itself to you as a piece of entertainment and then ends up occupying you in a, in a profound kind of spiritual way um, which, which I don't want to say a lot about it because it's at risk of compromising the rewards of the game. It hits everybody a little different too. Um, but also that it may have been at risk of kind of slipping into the past without being remarked upon at large. And um, that'd be a damn shame because I'm real fond of it. And uh, if there's anything I can do, so it's, I mean, frankly, it, it's pretty selfish. Um, I just, I want to see more folks, uh, I, I want to see this game hit more retinas. And, uh, it, and it was kind of pleasurable also to, to watch uh, people accept the challenge. And so they, they came looking for cart life, and they see that it, it's something else. And they still sat in the chair and gave it a shot, which I'm, I'm really happy about that. And so even though the game uh, is disturbing and transgressive in many ways, uh, they were still up for the challenge, and they, and they sought the rewards and they experienced it really well. That's very cool. Now, what's it like to sneak spray paint into a giant <laughs> uh, convention hall? Was there any pushback? Did you like like disguise it in a paper bag? How did that work? No, was, I mean, I, I always have some in my suitcase. You know, uh, there was some squid ink and um, you know a little spray paint. You know, um, uh, uh, you know, just in case. You never know. 
gaffer's tape, rubber gloves, <laughs> surgical mask. You never know, right? You got to keep the basics. Um, but I, you know, any trip to San Francisco, yes. Well, anywhere really. Um, it, it, you know, anywhere here in the continental U.S., I guess. But um, yeah, I, it's funny you use the word sneak because I I was hoping to get a little bit of like guilty joy out of doing this, and so when like the festival attendees and um would come by or like the the volunteers or the festival organizers uh, and they came by and I was I was hoping for you know a little heat and and they'd be like oh great this is so great I'm like oh really you had to go and make a game in the Nuovo category so you by default put yourself in a position to have everyone go oh that's beautiful <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could have yeah. probably like taken off your pants and everybody like oh this is such a <laughs> statement about gaming <laughs> yeah well you still have the opportunity here at the Unwinnable Party. I see you are drinking the only whiskey drink here in the house. We were all wondering where you found that. Oh, well, I, I brought some. And feel free to help yourself. Um, this is the shared favorite of, uh, of all of my... Um, my uh, some of the most notable world leaders share a favorite in uh, Kentucky whiskey, I guess. You know, uh, But well, there's plenty to go around. Well, that's very kind of you to share with all of our viewers. <laughs> uh, we'll be sure to we send them your home address so that they can ask you to mail you them some because that's the only way they're going to drink it. You know, shipping is, is tricky, especially when you're talking about fluids. Um, so we'll see. Maybe maybe in person, you know. So you're saying everyone should come down to visit you you and me here in Seattle. Well, down in Seattle. Up in Seattle. Up around yeah, in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so we're going to be having a nice uh, cocktail party coming up on uh, February 4th. Um, it's going to be at the uh, Room 123 of the Ramada Inn. No, let's, do, let's do it at your place. Okay, it's going to be at my place. All right. So uh, thank you so much, Richard, for uh, sitting and talking to us. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks a lot, man.